Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on Linux file system. But before we get started today, I will really appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel to get the latest updates. Today I'm really excited as I'm starting a new series on Linux operating system. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. As a Linux admin, you will be mostly working on command line. You will hardly be working on a graphical user interface. So let's open the terminal box and let's get into the file system. Today I'm using Kali Linux 2021 edition. So right away you can see the prompt. It says mancomal at Kali-2. Mancomal is the user that I'm logged in with and Kali2 is the host name of the system that I've logged into. That is this box. The tilde means that I'm in the home directory of the user. You can also check this by using a simple command pwd. A pwd shows that you are in the home directory of Mancomal right now. So in today's video, as we go along, you'll learn about the file system and you will also learn about some of the commands that we are using in the command line. Like pwd means print work directory. So in this case, the work directory that we are in right now is slash home slash mancomal. Let's see what's in the directory of this user. So here we see something very similar to what we see in Windows. We see that this user has a desktop directory, a documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, thin client drivers, and videos directory. Now, how do I know that these are all directories? If you see on the left, the D represents directory. If this would have been a file, it would have been just a dash. So we use the command ls, that is list, hyphen l I am doing is an argument that I'm giving to list all as in list. If I were to do just ls, it would come as uh, in one line, but I prefer, always prefer to list it as a list like this. We get to know what are the permissions, who's the owner, what is the group that it is assigned to, what's the size, with the date it was created or the date it was modified. So let's look into the documents folder now. So in the documents folder, there is a text document test residing. Now, how do we know that this is a file? Okay, the color is white, obviously, but if you see on the leftmost part, that is this part, it's a hyphen. That means this is a file. If you see this, this is a directory. Let's switch our user as root and let's look into the directory structure of the root. sudo is a command that we use to assume that we are the root. We'll put in our password and now we are logged in as root. So you see the username has changed. It was earlier mancomal, now it is root. You can also do a who am I. It says that we are root. If we would do it with under the user that we had logged in earlier, it says that we are mancomal. So the root folder work directory is not the home directory that we saw earlier for the user. If you print the work directory here, the work directory is slash root. So let's change our directory and go back. So if you have to go back one space in the directory structure, we do cd dot dot. We are in the root directory now. We can reconfirm it by inputting pwd and yes, we are in the root directory now. So this is the root of the operating system now. Let's look at the file structure here. So this is the file structure here. So earlier on we saw that hyphen means a file, d means a directory, and there is a new character here now, l. What does this l mean? l means a symbolic link. Symbolic link is nothing but a shortcut, similar to a shortcut in Windows. That is that it just represents a pointer to the main file. So in this case, a lib32 basically points to user hyphen lib32. So the Linux file system is based on FHS, that is file system hierarchy standard, which defines the directory structure of the Linux and this is maintained by the Linux foundation. Everything in Linux is a file. Everything, a device, a process, everything is a file. For example, we were using a command list the directory structure as a list. So we can check up where this list resides. So you can see that it resides in user bin ls. So when I said that everything in Linux is a file, that means that this ls command is also a file. To read a file in Linux, we use the command cat, and this is the file list which we were using to list the directory structure. Bunch of garbled. This is basically because it's a binary file and it is not a text file. Binary is what the system understands. So let's go back and let's see the directory structure of Linux. 
So let's understand what is all contained in these directories. The first one is boot. The boot directory contains all the files needed to boot the system. We don't work much on the boot directory, so let's get out. This is basically what you need to know is that this directory contains all the files that are required to boot the system. Then comes the dev. Dev is short for device. So if you go into dev, you will see all your devices here. All the devices that are mounted on the system, you will find it here. For example, SDA. This is your hard disk. Even your hard disk exists as a file. The CPU, that is also listed as a file. All the devices that are mounted on the system are under the dev folder. Let's go back and let's see other directories. So the next directory is etc. And as you rightly guessed it, etc. This is the folder where all your configuration of all the processes, programs, or services that you're running on the system, like your SSH, will be here. So my SSH configuration, like SSHD config, is here. So it says that right now, because I've not set any ports, so this is running on port 22. And since I've not set the listening address, it is running on all the addresses that are present in the system. So all your configuration of all your services are present in etc folder. So let's get out of this folder. So the next folder is home. Home is where all our users files are. All the user of the system, there's only one user here. So there is only currently one directory here. Let's go back to the main directory. Let's see what other directories we have. At this juncture, let's look at three or four directories now. That is bin, lib, lib32 and lib64. Bin is binaries. So when we're using list hyphen L as a command, or we were using PWD, where are these coming from? So where PWD? So PWD is coming from user bin PWD or bin PWD. So in the Linux file system, everything by default comes from user bin, that is user bin. So all your commands, default commands are here. Like we used who am I, or like we are constantly using ls. These commands reside in user bin. And since all of these are files, we can copy say ls command into mksb, that is short for for my name. And we can run mksb minus l, that is same as list command. So now you see that there is no color coding done. If you check where again ls, so you see that ls is allies to ls hyphen hyphen color is equals to auto. This means that if I run mksb hyphen l hyphen hyphen color is equals to auto, this should give me an output in color coded. Let's see. Yes, it gives me an output in color coded. So in the user folder, if you see the directory structure, we see bin, which contains the binaries. We see lib, lib32 and lib64. These are the libraries. The shared libraries that the commands that we are executing like list, pwd, etc. They need some libraries to operate. These are all the libraries that support those commands. And if you if you go back to the uh, main root directory and if we list the directory structure again, we see the similar uh, directory structure here also for bin, lib, lib32, lib64, lib x32. This is all pointing to user folder. So user folder is the main folder from where the files get executed when we are logged in as user or when we are logged in as a user of the operating system. And the root file structure is needed when, when we are logged in in a safe mode or a recovery mode or something like that. So like bin, there is a, another folder here, sbin. This folder contains all the non-essential binaries. That is binaries that are not needed to boot the system or to mount the user folder, or to repair it. For example, like init and route commands are placed in sbin folder. Let's go back to the root directory. So next is tmp. tmp means temporary folder. You can store files here temporarily. You can store directories here temporarily, but when you reboot the system, everything that you have stored here will be gone. So it is just there till the time the system is on. Once you reboot it, those files or those folders will go. 
The var folder is synonym to variable. This folder contains log files, mail files, your HTML pages, cache, backups, etc. So we can check the folders here. Since we are in the root directory, we can go into var log. So we see all the logs that the system is generating in real time and it had generated in the past are all stored here. Note that this time around, I didn't go into the var folder, but to list the directory, I used list hyphen L var slash log. Coming back to the file system hierarchy standard, there are two more folders that I want to talk about. One is OPT and one is proc. When we install any of our apps, all such software applications, the user software application go into the OPT folder. That is the optional folder. And the last is PROC or a short for process. All the files for the processes running in the system are in this folder. Let's just capture some things, say memory info. So this will give us the RAM information of the system. So like currently this is running on a 4 GB RAM system. So let's capture the CPU information of the system. So this system is running a Intel Xeon CPU E3 1270 V3 processor. So there you have it. Now you know what the file structure of the Linux means. In the upcoming videos, we'll be discussing more on Linux. So do subscribe to the channel to get the latest updates. If you like this video, please press the like button. Do let me know what you think about this video in the comments. Until the next time, goodbye.